Ladies and gentlemen, comb your hair and welcome Britain's top light entertainer and singer, Vic Reed. Going down to Alphabet Street, I'm gonna crowd the voice going at me. I'm gonna talk so sexy. You want me from my head to my feet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Are you, are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> right, Jingo, I should expect so. And so thank you very much to uh, uh, Mr. Nabisco, <laughs> Chairman of Nabisco, Chairman of Nabisco, no less. And uh, thanks for bringing. I see I've been away in hospital having me give me giblets, my innards cleaned up a bit. <laughs> and he's there. Uh, and it was no problem breaking you out of there, you know. As I, I do a little sideline, actually, celebrity springing from hospitals. Oh, right. I did uh, Billy Idol. Really? Yeah, the uh, Gordon Kerr. Is it Gordon Kerr? Did oh, it yeah, as well. Yeah, and James right. Elliott I'll be doing as well. <laughs> is, is James in hospital at the minute? He will be soon. Mary Quant's out the back giving him a good pummeling. Really? <laughs> oh, terrible scenes. <laughs> right, Jingo. Well, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, you would not believe you would not believe what's going on backstage. I was down the back, Paddy Ashdown, in a skimpy nighty. And it, well, it was a nice one, not a tacky one. <laughs> and a pair of really gorgeous high heels. And he was laughing at the contents of a Kingfisher's diary. And uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, they, they do put a lot of rubbish in them, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. Them skeleton people, they put a lot of rubbish in the diaries as well, don't they? Anyway, get the kettle on, mother. I'm nearly finished up. Let me eat you. Well, later on tonight... <laughs> look at the size of that sausage! <laughs> later on tonight, we've got a priest who looks a bit like J.R. Hadley, and he will, uh, <laughs> He's got, a, like, a floppy area of skin. He'll be trapping flies under. <laughs> All later on, ladies and gentlemen, but without any further ado, let's meet Les! <laughs> And Les really still hasn't overcome his terrible fear of time. Oh, I do apologise, Les. So, Les, fact number one. What have we got up here tonight? Ooh, blimey, there's quite a long one there. What have we got? Um, Les, fact right, number Mick. one. All right. <laughs> Les knows an, a, a fabulous little Italian restaurant yeah, that he... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, you win. I'm absolutely sorry about that, Vic, but I'm so bored out there. <laughs> Honestly, bored. Why don't you give me bored on the back? You have to come out here, Oh, well, you get to come out the front. <laughs> I'm not going to do it, are you? <laughs> Does this phone work, then? Yeah, well, just... I'll tell you what, do you, want, do you want something to do? Well, I wouldn't mind, Lee. Well, you couldn't uh, uh, save me a job if you'd, you'd nail that bacon on the back wall. <laughs> what, just, yeah, yeah if, you could do, if you could do that for us. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, it'd be a help. Anyway, Les has brought a little pet along with him tonight, have you not? Les is pet, and uh, I do believe it's a little jellyfish he's got called Peter. And, uh, <laughs> Les, yeah. Uh, you know that the lights are very hot in television studios. <laughs> I am sorry, Les, but... <laughs> Les, I didn't know what to tell you. Look, there's a bit of sellotape round the back. I think you, you might be able to sort it out. Hey, Vic. Vic. Well, smoke bacon, nice touch. Hey, thanks. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> oh, what's that? Well, oh, well get it back up, then. No, that can happen. Still. No, Carry on, you know, man. ladies and gentlemen, you, uh, you've been excluded from your house for the evening. You've got, to, you've got to spend the night in the shed. What do you do? You've got to entertain yourself somewhere. Well, I've got a bit of an idea for you. Brackets. Now, you always find a bracket in the shed, and I've come up with an idea to liven up a bracket, and I've sellotaped three peanuts onto this bracket here, <laughs> representing the three members of Genesis. So we've got... Uh, we've got um, Phil Collins here, um, Alan Alder in the middle, and Billy Whitehall at the other end at the apex. <laughs> It really does liven up a bracket there, I'm sure we're okay. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, let's stand. All stand now! Stand, thank you very much. Stand and welcome the man with the stick! <laughs> All right, 
I didn't say you could sit down. What do we cry when we say a man with a stick? What's on the end of that stick? What's on the end of that stick indeed? Are you going to reveal? I doubt if you are, really, are you? You are going to reveal. Well, let's have a look. <laughs> let's have a look at the end of this stick. What have we got? Oh! <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> 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 he looks at, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that Admiral Nelson's final flannel? <laughs> <laughs> Put your stick down, relax, take it easy, I'll take my stick, come and join me over here. Let's have a look at that helmet, yes. What have we got here? The feeling you get when Bullseye comes on the telly. <laughs> A lamppost that's been disconnected to serve electricity for the Farnborough Air Show. <laughs> and one of the kinks trying to force a duvet into a bread bin. <laughs> back with something back. What have we got here? Uh, a terrible smell enveloping an entire campsite, and behind a bush, we can just see Belinda Carlisle <laughs> cooking some pears. <laughs> mm, sounds like a good camp, does it to me? So, members, come over here and join me. We've heard all about your research and all that, but what about the man behind the mask? Man, stick good. Man, stick good, yes. <laughs> good man behind mask, what? Well, uh, putting it briefly, uh, Vic, I'm a clerical officer with the local port authority. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I've been working there for four years. I'm single, not married. <laughs> and uh, I do menial duties, but it's all livened up. Mar hey, come on. Yeah, listen. yeah. It's all livened up by the presence of a fella called Terry. Oh, really? Terry, oh, it, right, it sounds great. It's not a pleasure, right? For example, let me give you an example. Yeah, right? go on then. Go on, Look, give I'm in a little porter cabin separate from everyone else because they don't like to work with me. <laughs> right, yeah. And Terry said, there's the bus's car. Why don't, one of the stick, why don't you scrape the car? You didn't, did you? Oh, I can't believe it. Terry called the police, like. He didn't, did he? Oh, he no, didn't. No, no, he no, no, can't have no, done. No. Yeah, go on. No, no, no. Yeah, go on. What he does is he puts chemicals in me too. He doesn't. He doesn't. No, I can't believe it. <laughs> When I eat them all, my face, like, puffs up, really. Oh, down. that's fantastic! And he brings all the lasses in to laugh at this. Oh, does he? Oh, we have a brilliant time. Oh, it sounds like a great laugh right. there. Anyway, Vic, enough of that. Enough of me. Yeah, what? Um, I heard you've been stuffing uh, toilet paper up some rabbit's butters. <laughs> <laughs> you want to mention my Warren blocking weekend with Lizzie Stanton, didn't you? <laughs> you wouldn't let it lie, would you? <laughs> No, you wouldn't let it lie! <laughs> you wouldn't let it lie, would you? I think, I think you believe you've overstayed your welcome. I enjoyed your rag, but you've overstayed your welcome. Take your stick and get out! No. Some, of them little, some of them little bunnies might suffer from asthma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Do you know, a lot of people say to me, Vic, why do you never contact the dead? <laughs> so I thought it's a good idea. What I may do now, if, I, if you'll allow me to, is I'm going to contact the dead and I think I'm going to contact Elvis Presley, the pop singer. <clears throat> Elvis! Presley, the pop singer! Are you there, son? <laughs> I said, are you there, son? Oh, you, mate. What do you want? Elvis! I have a question for you. Look, I'm in purgatory, man. Will you let it be? Well, I don't mind. I still have a question for you. Well, go on, then. I'm thinking, Elvis, of buying a combination fridge-freezer. <laughs> Is that a good idea, or should I just stick to a separate freezer unit? Do you entertain a lot? <laughs> get a Do you entertain a lot? I entertain quite a bit, yes. Well, I think you should stick with the chest freezer. All right, good idea. Thanks very much. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, don't! <laughs> See it! What do you think you're doing? <laughs> eh? Thank you, I've got in touch with Elvis. Goodbye. Elvis, goodbye. Very poor. Very poor. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to spend a little time at Les's Lunch Club in the company of the Living Carpets. <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't believe it, you know, but you know the Barber of Seville, the opera? Oh, yeah. Based on my life story, that. You lie and get. 
<laughs> you lie and get. I tell you what, you know I'm Jerry, o Jerry Old's father-in-law. You lie and get. It's true, I, you know. Hey, you know, when I sharpen knives, right, they get so sharp that I have to hand them all over to NATO. You lie and get. <laughs> it's true. I heard that rumour. I know, I started it. I tell you what, though, I shot the sheriff and the deputy. <laughs> I heard that rumour. I know, I started it. I'll tell you what, though, there, mate. Hey, nice fella. All right, yeah. You know, I'm paid £1 billion by the Indian government to paint all the pe bit red bits in pilau rice. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm paid a million billion pounds by the Indi Indian government for putting them horrible tasting seeds in them. You lie and get. You lie and get. Hey, I'm invisible in cinema foyers, you know. Really? You don't see anything but a you has a slight smell of meat. Really? Yeah. You lie and get. You lying, get. I tell you what, I was out shopping with our last last night <laughs> and my tongue shot out and made a hole in the ozone layer. Hey, I love a nice cup of tea, mate. You lying, get. <laughs> well, you know, it's been pleasant, but I, I, I've got something to tell you before I go. Go on, then, you lying, You know, get. mate, I'm hired by Disney World because I've got the biggest hand in the world and they hire me to catch eagles for Robert Redford's tea. Well, I've got a big, bloody big foot, foot as well as it happens. And I'm hired by NASA to boot all the space shuttles into space, you see. You lying, Jack. <laughs> anyway, it's been pleasant to see you. I'll see you later. See you later. See you. <laughs> you know, I, I, I always thought Psychedelia was a cookbook for mental patients. <laughs> I'm right naive, me. Oh, tappy. <laughs> oh, mum, oh, mum, oh. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time to take a trip once again to Novelty Island. <laughs> And the first act tonight is a special treat for me, ladies and gentlemen, and for you. First act tonight at Novelty Island is Les. And Les... Les apparently has a pain display book that he's collected from car parks throughout the country. <laughs> and you take these off of... Uh, blimey, Les, you are sweating a bit, aren't you? <laughs> Les, uh, you, you, so you collect these from, and I tell you, here's one from uh, the Balmoral multi story where all the world leaders meet the Queen. Park the cars and that, you see. Have you got any on tractors? Oh, Blin, I like them. They're my favourites, really. All right, there we are. Les, <coughs> with his pound display collection. By the way, Les is sponsored by Expella. <laughs> Act two at Novelty Island is Graham Lister. <laughs> Graham reckons this week that he is a trainee environmental health officer. <laughs> and he enjoys. Reeves, oh. I don't reckon I am a trainee health officer. You reckon you are this week, and apparently you're sponsored by Happy Shopper, which I very much doubt. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's what a... crap act have you got for us tonight? You see, Reeves, you've not seen the act, but you choose to say it's crap. <laughs> I'm merely judging it people by your previous efforts. Be, people will begin to Get see. on with it, then. Go on. What, what I will do is I will flatten some brie over a kitchen tile that, <laughs> just by chance, Reeves, as it were, has a picture of yourself on the middle of it. <laughs> now, I will do this in 15 seconds, which, if you can count to that number, I'd like to give you me. And you're going to flatten brie all over it. In 15 over. seconds, if you do the time for what me. What a Thank brilliant you. idea, there. There you go, Reeves. All right, then. There you are, Reeves. Flat your turn's up. <laughs> Oh, you've cut me short, have you? No, that was 15 seconds. Oh, it doesn't surprise me, Reeves, I've become used to it. And that's... Is that really worth coming up on stage to do? <laughs> if I was given a proper chance, it would be. What a brilliant act, Graham. No, no. No, you get off. I've had enough of you. Get out. Do you know what really sickens me, Reeves? You know what really sickens me? What? You. No, you. <laughs> Uh, Novelty Island. <laughs> it's <coughs> Cabbages and Bells. <laughs> Cabbages and Bells is a pamphlet that suddenly enjoys trapping Jenny Wrens with corrugated iron and abusing them with coriander stems. Cabbages <laughs> and Bells? <laughs> Well, 
as we take a trip over here now, I think, with a little bit of luck, that's a little bit of luck, I think... <laughs> I think we've got George Wells on the end of the telephone line. Now, um, George is an ox and has been viewing tonight's act from the top of uh, the Crystal Palace TV mast via the gift of radar. Come on, answer. George, answer! George, come on! Hello, what? What do you want? Oh, George! <clears throat> what is it? I don't think we can see him there. George, now you've been viewing the acts tonight. Could yes. you tell us, yes, could you tell us which one you're going to be inviting to the top of the Crystal Palace TV mast <laughs> to feed on your soft white underbelly? Cabbage is a <laughs> bell. Marvellous! Yeah. Brilliant! <laughs> oh, gorgeous. What are you doing now then? I've just put some cherries in the gaps. It's made it, you know, it's brought it out quite a bit, hasn't it? Right. <laughs> it's, brilliant, it's, yeah. it seems to have worked. It's yeah. looking smart. I, I tell you what, you, have you ever thought of taking up interior design? Well, a few people have said like that. Yeah. I'm quite good at it, you know. It's uh, well, that's, you know, you that, take your own view on that. I don't know. I tell you what, though, if you don't mind me making a comment. No, go ahead. To get the composition right, I think you need something sort of in between the two cherries there. Oh, you're dead right. And, um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe a leech. A leech? That's a good idea, isn't it? A leech. Perfect. We don't have a leech. Do we go and get one? If you've got some, you'll show me. All right, then we'll, um, we'll go off and get some leeches. In the meantime, uh, a big round of applause for Donald and Davy Stott. What's on Les's back? What? 
What's on Les's? Remember it if you can. Remember his back. Remember his idea. And on Les's back tonight, we have Victor Hugo's head. Look at this. Look at your mind. A Concord stroke cauliflower incident Stop stroke him. launchment. A picture of Pele on a flag stuck in a bloody big nut. Half a pound of tuppenny rice, a Victoria Milona's urine sample, and of course a fluffy Clemmy. That's a fluffy Clemmy. <laughs> Uh, a picture of Shut Pele up. on a flag. Shut uh, up. Cauliflower. Uh, a Flemish something. <laughs> uh, Concord. Uh, some uh, some wiry things with balls on the end. Vanilla. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, some test tubes, Concord, a cauliflower. Picture of. Tell you what, the stots are good, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Right, right, I've seen them before. Well, we've been out, we couldn't find any leeches, but we got all of some tapeworms, are you? <laughs> Off the England World Cup squad. <laughs> and I think we did them a bit of a favour, really, didn't we? Thank you. Hey, it's looking great, isn't it? Oh, it's looking that brilliant nice. now, isn't it? I tell you what, you, you couldn't come round to my place and do a bit of work on it, could you? Well, if you trust me, I could, yeah. Well, there's some stuff I've been... I was thinking about putting, uh, cutting uh, cucumbers in half and putting them around the edge of the bath. Well, what colour scheme have you got in the bath? Um, it's a sort of puce. <laughs> oh, no, it would clash terribly. That would be too strident, really? yeah. And what I'm doing... <laughs> what I'm doing at the moment, though, and it's proven quite popular, is unravelling cassettes, like, in dining areas. Oh, Just right, leave yeah. them there. It works quite well. It's quite fashionable, yeah. I tell you what I was thinking of, you know, Iron Maiden? Oh, yeah. I was thinking of cutting the hair off and using it for thatching on my roof. Well, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it could work. It could work. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it could work. Look, are you going to let them bunnies out the uh, burrows? <laughs> are we? I, no, you wouldn't let it lie, would you? You wouldn't let it lie. I would have let it lie. You wouldn't let it lie. I would have let, let it lie. You didn't let it lie. You didn't let me let it lie. You would let it lie. You would have let it lie. Let let it lie. It lie. <laughs> are you going to let them out? Yes. It's not <laughs> business. It's is it? It's business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Songwriter, write me a song on your trumpet, make it a good song, so that everyone in the world can sing along. Yeah! Oh, Mr. Carpenter. So that the old people in the world can have a good sit down. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. What do you think you're doing here, Jeff? Don't leave it. Hey, leave it, Jeff. What do you think you're doing? Leave it, Jeff. You always say you're welcome. What's up? Oh,